We're back here on First Up, the first stop in your busy day, and we're going to be focusing on the local film industry and the thrust that's being made to provide a proper home and a proper space for our independent film producers. To discuss some of the new trends and some of the new initiatives taking place, we have with us the marketing manager for the film company, TNT Film Company, Rudolf Hanamji also with us, an old colleague of mine who is now labeled with the very, you know, ooh, independent <laughs> film producer, Tracy Assey. Hi, good morning, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, thanks good morning. for having morning. us. Thanks, Jesse. Okay, so Rudolph, let's get started with you. Um, the, the independent film producers, are they finally going to be getting the boost that they need and will the film industry here be getting the boost that it needs with these new initiatives from the film company? Good morning to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I have to go a step back, Jesse and mm -hmm. Hema, and say that in the last three years, um, well, this will be our fourth year as a staffed company, the local independent filmmakers have been getting boosts through the Trinidad and Tobago government. Um, as a matter of fact, this is our fifth call for our production assistance and script development fund, which is on right now, and it ends on January 31st, so I want to make a call for all filmmakers to take advantage of it. And I think building on the last three to four years work that the film company has done and moving into this new call and into 2011, um, there are resources that are available and if the filmmakers come forward and make their proposals that are sound and feasible, they will see the benefits come out of the work. And Tracy's going to talk a little bit today about her successes, but we've seen a number of local productions utilize the grant funding available through the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company to take their works on an international scale, and some of them have won international film festival awards, and others are seeing rewards coming through the commercial sector as well, through television and syndication. So I think, yes, the boost is there, and we are there to continue to work with the filmmakers and help them. Okay, Tracy, let's turn to you. Now, you produced an amazing film called The Amerindians, which has a great deal of buzz about it. Tell us, you know, how did you manage to make that film and the kind of support that you got from the film company as well? Okay, well, uh, good morning to Trinidad and Tobago as well. The, the story is, uh, is more or less uh, based on the, well, the starting point is the fact that I grew up in the um, Amerindian community in Trinidad and Tobago. The Santa is a Carib community up there in Arima. The Carib Queen is my great aunt. And um, as a child, I was always uh, intrigued because uh, in school, of course, you're taught about Caribs and Arawaks and that Caribs ate people. And so I really wanted to find out if my ancestors did that. Um, so that started my <laughs> journey. And um, I, I, uh, I wrote uh, extensively about it in Caribbean Beat and was encouraged by friends to make a pitch when the PASD call came around in 2008. Yeah. And, um, and I was successful at it. I, I got a start uh, for the production and it took two years to complete. Um, but it was a fantastic journey, lots of lessons, because of course it was my first film and the film company provided advice as well and um, also recommended uh, like script editors. I worked with Christopher Laird to help me get my script together. Um, and it premiered at the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival last year and um, the buzz is, is continuing about it. Um, there, there, might, there should be screenings at the National Museum soon for fourth, fifth, and sixth formers, most likely. Um, a, a few American colleges have been in touch about having it screened and um, asking me to give lectures. The thing is that it, it really has an academic basis as well. I interviewed a lot of academics for it because the point really was to kind of get the story right. And I think it's time that we start changing that story in schools, you know. It falls in the category of documentary or docudrama. Which category? It's... Uh, there's a there's a little bit of drama in it, <laughs> but it it's really more of a documentary. But there's a little bit of drama in it because it it really captures the reality of what's going on in the community. Um, some of the politics, um, you know, it's, it's that's a, where the drama comes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dynamic kind of situation, and that was part of the challenge of shooting over two years because it was so much a part of my life, and it's a situation that is um, evolving. 
it, 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 just to keep my pulse on the changes, um, it, uh, it was good to have that, that two-year period to really look at the subject in as thoroughly uh, a, a way as possible. Rudy, can we ask you a little bit about the script development program? What sure. exactly is it, the, the rationale behind it, and how can you apply for it? Well, the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company has basically two main mandates um, under its overarching goals. One is, of course, to promote Trinidad and Tobago as a film location, foreign and local film crews. But the other one is even more important in that it's content development, local content development. And through a process of consultations with our stakeholders, because um, I, Hannah, I have to draw reference to this. One of your former guests this morning uh, from the agri sector made the reference that the stakeholders must drive this sector. And we agree with that at the film company as well. And through a series of consultations with them, um, they called for this production assistance and script development grant fund. So as the name suggests, it's really two funding opportunities in one. The first part of it is where if you have a finished script, you can get funding to actually produce the project. And then the second is a script development where, you know, as a script writer, sometimes you can't have a full-time job. You have to stay home and focus on your work. And we want to support that initiative because it's a real career. So the script development fund allows you to have some income coming in while you work and focus on the script because that's the core of the pr project and we want it to be as strong as possible. So that's where that originated and we've been running it now for a, a four into five years. And just a quick reminder to those of you independent film producers out there, just go to Trinidad and Tobago Film. That's Trinidad and Tobago Film, one word, dot com. And uh, at the lower part of the page, you're going to see a link that will take you to more information about the PASD. Um, you've got 11 days left to submit your applications. Everything wraps up on January the 31st. And good luck to all of you who decide to take advantage of this opportunity. Hey, I think we need to check it out. We do. Yeah. How many applications have you had so far? For this year, we've had a ra just about 30 but traditionally, a lot of them come in just at the end. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Tracy early this morning, and she says she has some exciting work for us. But there is, you see, when we, when we speak of film, we have to remember that it's art meeting business. Mm -hmm. And when filmmakers are applying for grants, not only at the film company, but international grants and other uh, private investors gr grants, they really have to do a lot of research and background information to put forward a strong case for why this project should be supported, especially when public funds are in, uh, you know, involved. So that's why sometimes they take the entirety of the period to present this. Now you have 30 applications. Do you assist all 30 or do you choose a certain number and how do you choose it? I'm very happy you asked that question because a lot of filmmakers sometimes aren't too clear about how this works. The Trinidad and Tobago Film Company itself does not make the decisions. For transparency and fairness, we ask uh, independent jury to come in and this would include local and international filmmakers and they would filter all the applications now of course we have fixed budgets that are given to us through the ministry of trade because we fall under the ministry of trade and we try to assist as many worthy projects as possible so the jury will filter and they will assign based on the budgets that are attached to the proposals what each of these proposals that are deemed worthy should get and you know it means that sometimes some will get um, tens of thousands and some will get you know close to a hundred thousand dollars so and Tracy will attest to that as well so I think that the aim is to assist as many as possible because right now we want to allow filmmakers to have opportunities to learn grow their skills and to in, in inject that capital back into the economy because that's why film was identified as one of the key sectors in the first place for the government to develop because of the multiplier effect. When you are producing a film, it's not just Tracy, it's Tracy's cast and crew, it's the technicians, it's the carpenters, it's the doublesmen who you may buy uh, lunch from. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the benefit of film. Tracy, let's go back to your project, um, The Amerindians. You spent two years of your life, you dedicated two years of your life to this project. And we actually have some video that we can share with our viewers. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the video from Tracy's amazing production, The Amerindians. When I was growing up, I was taught that we were the descendants of an Amerindian tribe. 
My grandmother would wake all her grandchildren at the stroke of six o'clock every Sunday morning so we could dress and attend church with her. She was just as insistent about us taking bush baths. Along with her reverence to the Catholic Church, my grandmother made sure we understood that loving nature and our surroundings was key to salvation. That there is much to learn from dreams, the lives of plants and animals, the flight of birds, and changes in the weather. These were the keys given to me by my guardians. Okay, Tracy. So, um, I mean, this is, this is, you know, it clearly was a labor of love. What's next on the agenda for Tracy Assing, independent film producer? Well, um, there are a couple of uh, productions that I have in mind for, uh, going into this, this new year. Um, another documentary, um, possibly um, uh, an art film on one of our young local artists here, uh, um, Darren Chiwa. Um, and and uh, a couple of other pilots for things, but also um, the Amerindians has a lot of academic strength, and that I um, I'm really quite interested in, in having it grow in that way. Because as I said, you know, the the important thing was um, correcting the misinformation, um, and I'm glad Rudy raised the point about about the importance of business in film, because the 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 next step would also be. Um, making it available as a DVD and also negotiating with um, television stations for getting it shown and that's a really important point because it's it's uh, it's an area where the film industry needs a lot of support um, there are always arguments about local content and each year we hope it gets better you know so um, so I would say that hopefully that that's next as well um, sharing the work with a w with the wider population because even though it's screened uh, about four times with the film festival of course in in uh, smaller communities they really haven't had the opportunity to see the work and it's really it's about our country it's about our history and i feel like it can empower people who identify as being indigenous in this country because there are people who identify as being indigenous in this country and we don't all go around with feathers you know Really, mm -hmm. how successful has the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival been in terms of exposing our local talent? Well, first of all, I want to identify that the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival is a separate entity to the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company. So I want to I, just yeah, say. I think a lot of people <laughs> yes. do think it was. Yeah. They call us sometimes, is this a film festival? Um, but we, are, we have been a founding and major sponsor of the film festival because, to answer your question, it really has been a great support mechanism for distribution of local content and regional content as well. Uh, the film festival has grown by leaps and bounds and what it has really brought is an international uh, focus on Trinidad and Tobago as a center for film and film production. It has allowed foreign filmmakers, international and regional, to mix and meet with local filmmakers and to share experiences and to share what's out there and what's possible. Um, it's also allowed for a space for workshops to take place where skills can be heightened and people can really get a sense of what it means to be a filmmaker. So I, I want to commend the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival for what they've done and we will continue to support that and other film festivals that take place in Trinidad and Tobago like Anime Carib and UTT this year had a, uh, last year sorry, had a dance film festival. In terms of the, now we want to talk about l promoting local content and getting ind more independent pro um, writers, producers, more independent films, more local films. Are you seeing this big thrust towards that, that in that trend? Are people getting up and saying, you know, I want to be in the f local film industry. I want to create films about Trinidad and Tobago. I don't really see it that I have to go to, to the US or to anywhere else to get a viable career in this. Um, last week, Friday, I made a presentation to around 24 students who are part of the BA in Film Studies program at the University of the West Indies and a couple of weeks before that I adjudicated the UTT animation students presentations and there were about 20 students there as well and this is of course only one year. Yes, there has been an amazing thrust of young persons and young at heart persons 
who have decided, you know, this is a viable and feasible career. And they're getting up, they're doing the work, they're sending themselves to school. There was a young lady that graduated from the BA Film Festival that came from as far as Penal, if my memory serves correct. Every day she would come to class. It's a full-time program. And, you know, you're seeing people come from other uh, other backgrounds, people who are were into medicine, people who are into architecture, advertising, they're seeing the benefits of film. And when you look out, we also host a secondary school short film festival, which is coming up in September. And yesterday I did a presentation to a group of secondary schools on that. And they clutched to those materials, those collateral materials, so strongly because they want to. St. Francois Girls College, if my memory serves correct again, they have a studio at their school which was funded by the private investors. And I mean, when we have this, 24 schools took part. Um, 350 students were trained, and they all want to make films again this year. So yes. I, um, if I may, I'd like to, to support that. When I screen the film for students, they don't just have questions about the subject matter of the film, but about filmmaking in itself. We, we don't have any shortage of stories in Trinidad. And over the years, people have been upping their, their skills so and their training programs as well. Some people run independent training programs. So I think that the drive is certainly there. And um, people are, are thirsty to, to capture these stories because we, we don't have a shortage of stories in Trinidad. Um, the film company has come on board to support those efforts and the film festival. And um, hopefully more of it will start making its way to national television. We all hope that. But I think yeah. we do have to take a very short break. When we, we come back, um, Tracy is actually leaving us. But we're going to have on set John Barry. He's also a filmmaker. There's no shortage of stories in Trinidad and Tobago. And we're giving an opportunity to everyone involved to get their stories out there. Stay with us. <laughs> 